Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of this tape will be to show you one way of trimming a set of models to the specifications required by the orthodontic department. Before going through the different stages of trimming a set of models, let's take a look at a set of finished models to see the qualities of a good set of models. To begin with, the backs of the maxillary and mandibular cast should be in the same plane so that when the models are set on their backs, the teeth stay in occlusion. The capital and the base should be parallel to each other. The total height of the cast should be two and three quarters inches with the plane of occlusion lying approximately in the center of that two and three quarter inches. The sides of the model should be symmetric from right to left. The heels should be from 3 eighths to 5 eighths inch in thickness and should be symmetric from right to left. The plane of occlusion should be from 0 to 5 degrees with the horizontal. Finally, the line angles should be perpendicular to the capital. If you trim a set of models to these specifications, then you'll have a symmetric background on which to study any asymmetries that may exist in a malocclusion. To begin with, we need a good impression and an adequately poured model. The impression should have good extension so that all the muscle attachments show as well as the teeth. Secondly, the impression should be placed in the model former so that the plane of occlusion approximates the horizontal. Thirdly, the base should be thick enough to allow easy trimming. If the impression is improperly placed into the model former, then the plane of occlusion can be tipped, or as in this particular model, the impression was pressed too far down into the model former so that there is inadequate thickness to allow easy trimming. If this does occur, you will want to rebase before you start trimming. If your models are dry, they should be soaked from 5 to 15 minutes to allow for easier trimming. The best time to start trimming a model is at the time you remove the cast from the model former. <laughs> To begin with, it is many times necessary to remove some excess to allow easy placement of the model into the model trimmer. The first step is to trim the capital at from 0 to 5 degrees with the occlusal plane, horizontal. This is to establish the plane of occlusion. After the plane of occlusion is established, the next step is to mark the midline of the upper arch. We use the mid palatal suture. Mark this with a lead pencil. Then trim the back of the maxillary cast perpendicular to this line. Trim the backs in as far as the hamular notch area. Now the capital and the back are established. The next model shows you how we trim the sides of the model. Pick the side where the teeth are in best alignment and then trim the side parallel to the buccal surfaces.
then use an angle former, which can be bought in any department store for about $2, to measure the angle formed by the side and the back. With this, we can then establish the opposite side at the same angle. By using the angle former, you will know then where to trim in order to get the sides of equal, of, get the sides symmetrical. This next model shows you with both sides now symmetric. The anterior portion of the maxillary cast is trimmed to follow the arch form of the teeth. This line angle here should fall in the center of the most normally positioned cuspid. The midpoint should correspond to the mid palatal suture. Again, trim this portion parallel to the labial surfaces of the anterior teeth. Using your angle former, measure this angle and duplicate the angle on the opposing side. This next model shows you this completed. You should trim on in on the sides, both in the posterior and the anterior, to the depth of the vestibule. The next step is to trim the heels of the upper cast. To do this, we bisect this angle here and trim the heels perpendicular to this bisector. The heels should be trimmed in from 3 eighths to 5 eighths of an inch. To check your symmetry, again, use your angle former. To check the depth of the cut, measure with a ruler. We now have a maxillary cast that is completed. Using this maxillary cast with a wax bite, we articulate it with the lower model. Place the maxillary cast on the bottom and trim the back of the mandibular cast to establish it in the same plane as the upper cast. Now remove the mandibular cast and trim the base perpendicular to the backs. We now have a set of models where the backs are in the same plane and the capital and the base are parallel to each other. Now placing the mandibular cast on the bottom, complete trimming of the back. With the mandibular cast on the bottom, it is much easier to see when the trimming is completed. Now we are ready to trim the sides of the mandibular cast. Again, pick the side that has the most normal occlusion and trim the side parallel to the buccal surfaces. Again, use your angle former to, form, to measure the angle formed by the side and the back of the cast.
Start your trimming on the opposite side and adjust accordingly. The next model shows you this completed. The next step is to trim the anterior portion. The anterior portion is trimmed in a curve in line with the incisal edges of the six anterior teeth. This line angle should fall in the center of the most normally positioned cuspid. Next model shows you this completed. Again, trim in as to the depth of the vestibule, both in the posterior and the anterior. The next step is to trim the heels of the mandibular calves. The heels are trimmed so that they're parallel with the opposite side. Use your angle former to measure this angle to make sure that you'll end up with symmetry. Use your ruler to measure the depth of cut. The final step in trimming is to trim the capital and the base so that the total height is two and three quarters inches and so that the plane of occlusion falls approximately in the center of this two and three quarters inches. Trimming is now completed. Now we are ready to finish the models. The first step is to take your lab knife and make the tongue space smooth. Next, using a number seven spatula, remove any bubbles or imperfections that may exist. Using a very thin mix of plaster, fill in any voids that may exist. The cut surfaces are then smoothed using an Arkansas stone. The tongue space is made smooth by using some wet and dry sandpaper. Let the models dry for several days, and then label them using the patient's name, the age of the patient, and the days, day that the impression was taken. If desired, the models may then be soaked in a commercial soap solution and polished with either cotton or nylon to give it a high polish. When trimming models for the first time, you will find that it'll take you several hours rather than the 10 to 15 minutes shown here. To help you during this first time, it's best to leave some excess plaster all the way around to allow for adjustments and finishing. Good luck. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.